Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, I wanna talk about an issue that I'm experiencing as far as CPU thermals and what I am doing to resolve it. Now, all my gamers, as soon as they hear mining, they tend to turn off the video. But before you do gamers, I just wanna make sure you understand that what I'm really comparing is CPU thermals before and after. We're right now we're right on a Intel stock cooler for my setup, and we're gonna be replacing it with the ID Cool IS55. Now, this was actually one of the top rated ITX or small form factor coolers it could be a little bit bigger than some of the other ones. Um, and it was top rated by Hardware Canucks. So we're going to be seeing what the difference is compared to Intel stock cooler with Cryonaut on it uh, compared to this guy and see what the thermals drop to. And I just want to show you what those thermals are right now. And the reason I'm bumping into this is anybody who's familiar with the channel, Mining Dynax Coin. Um, requires users that if especially if you have so many GPUs which this is a 10 GPU rig the dual core kind of like falls over around 750 to 800 hashes so in order to get its full potential we had to update to a quad core right now we got the Intel uh, i5 7500 in there but the stock cooler and the workload that the CPU is having to deal with is obviously increasing temperatures we're at 72 degrees Celsius right now and here's the problem it's not summer and I live in Florida. We are pulling outside ambient air, which is around 82, 80 degrees right now at time of, time of filming. And we're exhausting the air out the top of the tent with a pretty decent fan. However, the other two rigs that are in the same confined space are not even on. So if it was summer and all my rigs were on, this CPU would be even more toasty. So that's a problem and I wanna deal with that problem now. So let me swap you guys over to the phone uh, for my new users to see my, my setup. And then I'm going to replace the stock Intel cooler with this guy and we'll compare thermals uh, when I get back. So bear with me as we move forward and thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, guys. Let's go check out the system. All right, so as you can see, here's the setup. We got two server power supplies, a B250 uh, from Asus, mining expert, stock Intel cooler, um, and then a bunch of GPUs. And then there's another rig on top of that and then a 12 GPU rig on top of that. When those are running, that's going to push out a lot of heat. We have the back door cracked a little bit every now and then, depending on the temperature, air blowing in. And then this door, I would normally close it and then leave the bottom section open. So cool air is coming in and then exhausting out the top. But as I mentioned, we're already hitting 72 degrees. Dang, I need to dust this thing. We're already hitting 72 degrees on the temperature. So that's where the IS-55 comes in. Uh, Installation guide, they, it's compatible with uh, various sockets like LG 1151 and so on. There's the cooler, there's the hardware we need, and pretty self-explanatory, right? Remove before installation, I know some people that haven't done that. There's an RGB header that we're probably not going to use. And then it's a four pin PWM. Cooler is very thin, very sleek. Matter of fact, let me measure it for y'all real quick. So from the top of the fan all the way down to the IHS or the uh, heat sink, about 54.5 millimeters, that's the height. There's your whip, about 120 millimeters. And there's your depth, about the same, 120 millimeters. So make sure it fits your rig, your setup, your gaming system. It actually does come with thermal paste and we might use that, but just to keep the uh, the measurements the same or the variables limited. We're just going to use cryonaut, which I still have. Hang on to this for later. Um, we're going to need this back plate because we're rocking Intel. So that back plate's going to be needed for AMD, not so much. I believe for AMD, you're going to need these guys right here, these black uh, legs. Or we might need, so there's two of them for AMD, two for Intel. I'll look at the instructions. Here's your standoffs um, that, you know, the, the back plate goes on these stands go on these pegs and then you have your uh, little screw nuts that you would tighten down obviously by hand get a finger tight and then maybe like a quarter turn afterwards uh, and they give you a little allen tool slash phillips head on it so lga 1700 i'm guessing the rest of this is compatible with older stuff let me go ahead and get this installed should be very easy all right so got Got the old Intel cooler off, alcohol prepped. These are the AMD brackets that you're gonna need. 
The Intel brackets are a little bit different if you follow the instruction manual. And if you look very carefully, there's two screws on either side that's going to mount to the brackets that's provided. And these brackets, the way they're positioned, at least for this CPU 1151, um, you got this little indentation that needs to be facing inward towards the CPU on either side, and that lines up the screws. So I'm gonna clean that off one more time with some alcohol prep, blow this, uh, this motherboard off real quick, and then mount the cooler, obviously, without the little warning label on it, and that should be done. Real easy install, about not even 10, seven to 10 minutes. All right, so we're back on the system and you can see the temperature right now is 55 degrees Celsius. That's a huge drop from the 72 that it was at before I started all this, uh, but I'm going to retest it again tomorrow when it's at peak heat, 88 degrees Fahrenheit outside in Florida with the same setup, same conditions and see how hot it gets or gets up to because I've seen this in the past to where uh, the CPU is actually getting even hotter or much much hotter uh, depending on the workload. Let me show you this real quick. So on screen right now, you're looking at inefficient um, overclocks, not using NV tool or lock clocks or, or lock mem clocks or offset, just letting it ride. And you can see the load is very heavy. Even though I'm on the latest NVIDIA driver for Linux, the load is very heavy. Dust the CPU is running really warm. I want to see if I restarted the system during the peak heat tomorrow, if it would get anywhere near 92. So right now, the numbers that you're looking at to compare is 72 versus 55 today, where it's around the same temperature ambient wise and externally, um, and then see what the hottest temperature we hit during a really hot and humid day here in Florida. I'll check back with, in with you um, when those temperatures come about and we'll wrap up the video comparing the thermals. All right, so I'm not sure what those little dots on my forehead were in the previous section of this video, but we are actually at the peak heat of the day, around the peak heat of the day, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just gonna get colder throughout the rest of the week. So this is gonna be the best in preparation for summertime here in North Florida. And you can see down here at the bottom, you know, there was a little bit of an adjustment that I made to the flight sheet, uh, this little spot, but you can see how stable it's been all night it's been running really good um and we're actually getting a little bit extra hash with a minor adjustment so we're pushing the gps a little bit harder pushing the cp a little bit harder and the peak temperature as you can see is only 55 degrees the load average is balanced out around three and this cpu cooler really dropped the temperatures that much right now it would have been around 72 maybe 75 um with the intel stock cooler with cryonaut but because this cooler just has the heat pipes and so much more surface area on the actual uh, cold plate or the, the plate that can, you know contacts the IHS of the CPU, it's just spreading out that heat so much more evenly, even though the workload has stayed the same or has increased. So definitely can improve. This cooler does drop temperatures. Obviously, just be mindful of the impacts on your case, depending on the size of your case or the impact on the memory depending on the type of memory you might have. If you rotate it the other way, is it going to contact the BRMs or the shroud over the BRMs? Just be mindful of that. But it definitely helped me out in my situation uh, here today. But thanks so much for watching and bearing with me throughout this uh, long-term video or long-form video. Do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description. Help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll also drop a link to where I bought uh, the ID cooling IS55 through Amazon. It is an affiliate link and helps out. And besides that, you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.